Hi everyone, it's Truly Tutoring here. Today we are going to be looking at Grade 11 Math in the Ontario Canada Curriculum. And the concept we are going to be looking at are zeros of a quadratic function. Now this video is just going to be really quick and it's basically going to go over how to look at a quadratic function that is written in vertex form and how to tell basically just by looking at the equation whether or not um, it has one zero, two zeros, or no zeros. Okay, so let's get started with that. So if we are given the formula for a quadratic function and like I said it's going to be written in vertex form if we have what I want to call case 1 if a and c in the formula are opposite Then we're going to have two zeros. And when I say opposite, I mean they're opposite signs. And then moving on to case two, if A and C are the same sign. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to have no zeros. And then in our last case, we have case three. And if there is no C value, we will have one case. Sorry, one, well, not one case, one zero. <laughs> My bad, we'll have one zero. Okay. So now to go back and look at vertex form. Again, if we're going to express a quadratic function in vertex form, we say y is equal to a x minus h squared plus c. Okay, so if I were to look at some examples of this, I could say y is equal to 3x minus 2 squared minus 1. My a value here is positive. Oops, sorry, positive three. And then my c value here is negative one. If I scroll back up, I know that if, oops, um, I know I scroll back up, I know if a and c are opposite, then I have two zeros. So I can conclude for this case, I'm going to have two zeros. All right, moving on to another example. I have y is equal to 4x minus 1 squared plus 2. Can you look and see that I have 4, which is positive. Positive 4 plus 4 goes up plus 2. So I have two positive numbers. Again, if I scroll back up and I see that a and c are the same sign, which is case 2 over here, then I know I have no zeros, so if I examine this case and I were to graph this, I would know that I have no zeros. Alright, let's do one final example. Example 3, say I have y is equal to 5x minus 3 squared. If I look here, I have an a value and it is positive, but I don't have a c value. There is no c value here. So again, if I scroll up and I see there are no c values, that's our case three right here. So based on this, I can conclude that since there's no c value, this has to have one zero. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Very, very short video, just kind of going over um, 
different ways to determine the number of zeros based on a quadratic function that is written um, or expressed in vertex form. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comments, and I will try my best to respond to you. All right, thanks so much for listening. Bye.